Before we get into the mountains today, we'll be down on the valley floor in Mackey at the fish hatchery. We stopped there with my family, which gave them a chance to see all the thousands and thousands of fish that are being raised. There are, of course, several runs, all holding fish of different ages, sizes, and species for that matter. Like many fish hatcheries, there was a run with many huge fish swimming around right up front. I can only assume these fish are the ones used for visitors to see, as they are the most impressive. There were lots of fish swimming around in what I would guess to be the 6 plus pound range. As you would expect, these are the fish that caught and kept the attention of my kids. These outside runs were where the more mature fish were being raised, but in the indoor portion of the hatchery, we'd find the fish that need the most attention. From eggs still unhatched to those still in the process of hatching and the little fry just a half inch to a couple inches in length. This container, for example, held nearly 9,000 golden trout eggs. If you look closely, you'll see that each egg has two little eyes as they progress in their development. All right, so we're starting today off here at the Mackey Fish Hatchery. John is getting a lot of the fish ready. They're actually going to stock several different lakes today. However, we're just going to follow them up to one of the Bellis lakes. Um, up in that lake, they're going to put about 1,500 fish. And all of these fish, including the fish that are going to Goat and Betty and a few of these other lakes, are all actually cutthroat from Henry's Lake. So, you know, you wonder where all the spawning, all those eggs go from Henry's Lake. They actually use some of those amazing fish in a lot of these high mountain lakes. So, they've got a process that they do to get these fish ready, whether they're taking them up in backpacks or using airplanes or horses, it's all kind of the same. So let's go in and see what they're doing to get these fish ready for transport. Inside, I met Pat Moore and Jason Jones, who were getting the fish that we'd be stocking ready for transport. First, they would fill this big pitcher with about a gallon of water. Now beforehand, they had calculated how much this particular batch of fry weigh and were able to determine that in each pound of fry, there were over 400 fish. With that knowledge, they netted a full scoop of fry and dumped them in with the water they'd already separated out. With the water being on the scale, they could easily add fry in as they watched the scale until they'd added another pound. In this manner, they could quickly and easily prepare thousands of fish for transport without actually counting them out individually. Once the predetermined amount of fry was measured out, they poured the water and the fish into a bag. Oddly enough, these are the same bags used in cafeterias to hold milk and other juice. These are all Henry's Lake cutthroat. Oh, okay. With all the fish and water poured into the bag, it's now time to add oxygen. Pure oxygen is what's pumped into the bag, making sure not to get it too tight, as we'd be transporting them up higher in elevation, and so the pressure would naturally increase. Of course, you don't want the bags to rupture, so you gotta make sure there's a little bit of room in there. Once the bag is sealed, the clock starts ticking, because of course the amount of oxygen would decrease over time, and the byproducts and the carbon dioxide would increase. There were still several more bags of fish to prepare, however, so Pat and Jason worked quickly to get them ready. 1,500 fish would be going with us to the Bellis Lake, but among other lakes, they were also preparing fish for Betty and Goat Lake. As each bag of sealed fry was ready to go, John Flinders was grabbing them and loading them into the coolers. Each cooler already had ice on the bottom so that during transport, the water and fish didn't get too warm. With the truck full of coolers and loaded with thousands of cutthroat fry, it was time to head off in the direction of the trailhead. We still had an hour of dirt roads to drive before getting to the trailhead, but if you've ever been in the Copper Basin, you know it's pretty scenic. So we enjoyed the views as we hurriedly made our way to our destination. We just got to the Bellis Lakes Trailhead and we're trying to beat fishing game up there because they're on the horses with the fish. So we're going to try to get a head start and see if we can't beat them up to the lakes. 
Lucky for us, John had to meet with several others and divvy up the fish for the respective lakes they'd be taken to. So we knew we might have a bit of a head start before he even got to the trailhead with those that were helping him. How much of a head start, we didn't know. So we tried to move along quickly, as horses can cover ground in a hurry. From what I can tell, it's somewhere between two and a half to three miles up. So, not too bad of a hike. While the trail is only a few miles long, there's still a pretty steep section to it. However, that section isn't until near the end. In total, there's only about a 1,500 foot elevation gain from the trailhead to the lake. So really not too bad compared to most other lakes in the area. There were a few sections that you could tell several trees had come down, but this trail has been kept up pretty well with most of the trees having been cleared out by the Forest Service. A few creek crossings are always fun in these backcountry trails, but neither one was too difficult to get over and still stay dry. Once we crossed over to the south side of the creek, we were met with several very large meadows that really helped make even the trail pretty scenic. Add all the wildflowers that are in bloom to the mix, and you have a recipe for a great trip. good for the first mile and a half. We've been a little steep part but if we were going slower it wouldn't be too bad but we're trying to hustle up there so we beat the horses so we can see them put the fish into the lake so we're gonna get on up there. Now we've hit our steep section here. It's been a pretty good trail up till this point and uh, we're probably about a half mile away is all. The steep section ahead was a drastic difference from the trail we've been hiking. It was very steep with few switchbacks. This part had a lot of loose dirt and rocks. That together with the heat of the day made us put on a good sweat and our legs really got burning. From this point to the lake was a gain of about 800 feet even though there was only a half mile left. So in this last half mile we would gain as much elevation as we'd gained the previous two miles. Down below you can see Candace and Cade as they were just getting started up the steep section as Aubrey and Abby and I took a break in the shade near the top. After the big climb was over, there was one last high mountain meadow to cross through with the first and biggest of the Bellis Lakes just on the other side through the trees. As I walked up with the girls, we found Luke and Riley had already put their poles together and were just starting to throw a line out to the many fish they could see cruising near the shoreline. How was it, Cade? Hard. <laughs> was that hard? Uphill. Yeah? You made it? High five. Well, as you can see, we made it. The lake is a beautiful lake and a beautiful setting. Uh, the hike really wasn't that bad. There was that one steep section, but overall we got up here really quick. Um, and I was surprised that we actually beat John with all the horses and everything. Um, we must have had a bigger head start than I thought. But either way, a beautiful lake. We're going to pull out some some rods and see if we can't catch some fish. There are definitely fish here and uh, we'll go from there. Just because I could hardly wait, I threw out a spinner to the several trout that were cruising nearby. While they did come and look at my Panther Martin, that was it. They really didn't give me even the time of day. So I decided to improvise a little. Take it. Yay! <laughs> All right, so about a 10 inch one there. We were trying spinners at first, which were not productive at all. So I actually, on this spinner rod, went ahead and just threw a beaded woolly bugger on. And uh, first cast, even though it's just a spinner rod, I was able to watch it come and take it. So now we'll maybe get the kids set up and see if they can catch some fish. We've got Oh, a good dozen scouts over here, and it's not a big lake, so it's probably been fished a little bit, and uh, they're a little spooky, so um, we're still waiting on John. I'm surprised. We've probably been here 45 minutes, and we haven't seen him yet, and uh, we'll, we'll kind of hang out with them, see what they're doing, and then we might bomb up to another lake really quickly um, to try. Knowing that maybe flies would be more productive, 
Both Riley and Luke switched over to flies even though they didn't have leader and tippet. Riley went with the mosquito pattern and Luke went with the prince nymph. Riley's patience paid off as eventually the fish that were slurping nearly invisible flies took his mosquito. It's a little cutthroat. Luke on the other hand had started working around the lake with Aubrey tagging along. He tried multiple places and nearly got all the way across from us before getting his first one hooked. Fish on. They weren't very big fish, but in this case it really was about testing their skills against these stingy cutthroats. As I slipped in a gap in the trees and just watched the fish, I was surprised at how many were cruising around slurping flies as long as they weren't spooked. When I heard the horses from the scout camp get vocal, I looked over and saw that John had finally made it with the horses and the fish to be stocked. He had been accompanied by a couple local fishing game officers that offered their help. They quickly pulled off the boxes that were holding the bags of fish and then allowed my kids to help take them over to the lake. At this point, they're just like introducing fish from a pet store in your own fish tank. You just put the bags with the fish in the water to let them acclimate. Meanwhile, Riley, who'd still been trying to entice the fish to his fly, hooked up with another. This is my second one. They're pretty tough to catch, so you got to be really patient. But it's fun. There you go. That was a Henry's Lake cutthroat caught up in a high mountain lake. Once the fish were acclimated to the lake, it was time to release them. So we just have four bags of fish here. Um, each of these bags we got from the hatchery that have water in it and we brought them up on ice and then they've got a bunch of oxygen in there. Um, they work pretty well, they're really durable. So we have 1,500 fish that are going in here today and each of these bags have, you know, three, four, five hundred fish in each bag. So we just kind of let them acclimate for a while in the lake. Uh, so the temperature is the same from the bags to the lake. Then you just, it's as simple as just cutting open the bag and releasing the fish in the lake. And there's a lot of good habitat and logs and rocks and cover for these small little guys. So as you release them, they can kind of go disperse and start spreading out around the lake. But these are just, you'll see they're, these are our, our fry. These are Yellowstone cutthroat trout uh, that we're stocking in Bellis today. And they came from Henry's Lake. These are eggs. They came from Henry's Lake Hatchery, reared at Mackey Hatchery, and, and now we're bringing them up here to Bellis to release. So um, we'll release them. You'll kind of see them probably disperse around around the lake as we kind of let them go. And it's just as simple as just cutting open the bag and letting them go. You can see those, I don't see any fish that we had any mortalities. It looks like all of them made it up here in pretty good shape. They're pretty camouflaged down in there. It's kind of hard to see. But... John allowed my youngest kids to release some of the fish as well, and we were all amazed at how 1,500 fry could disappear so quickly. So we stocked these fish in as, as a little fry, you can see about two inches long. You know, and, and obviously growth is gonna vary with these fish depending on the lake and how many bugs are out there and productivity. But generally I would say um, probably two, three inches of growth every year. So you could expect in a few years, you could have some 10, 12 inch fish that come, come from this batch that we stocked in here. Once the fish were all stocked, we actually hiked up to one of the other Bellis Lakes where even my youngest caught fish, this time using spinners. It was a tough hike up to those other lakes as we had to gain a lot of elevation, 
but it just added to the adventure of the day. I'd show you all about it, but I'm running out of time. Third fish of the day. It was a fun trip. It's a long drive to come all the way out here for a day hike, but we had a good time, made some memories. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to the Jared Scott Outdoors YouTube channel.